and welcome back to the Real Matrix files. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today uh, about, um, it's sort of a bit of an add-on really from a previous podcast about the harmful effects of mobile technology and um, I will have addressed it with you in a broad sense, uh, mainly to do with people in general. But I think uh, despite the numerous conversations that are already occurring about the harmful effect that it has on children and young people, um, I wanted to make a finer point of it with you and hopefully there's something in this that um, is new, um, you may not have heard before or may offer you a different perspective um, or a, a, a little even more insight into um, the harmful effects of mobile technology on children and younger persons. What I have noticed from my uh, experience is um, a child's brain, as you know, isn't finished developing until a certain age. Um, there are certain processes and certain neuronal connections that need to be made and sustained within a young person's life for them to be able to go out into the world and uh, have a a fully functioning, um, healthy, positive life. Um, unfortunately, what the mobile tech does, um, the phone itself and the apps that are inside it, is it uh, it recodes the, the brain. Um, as you know, most of the apps are deliberately juiced to cause addiction. And they are programmed in such a way that is not aligned or in harmony with the human brain, let alone a child's brain. And it also directly attacks our energy centers. Um, without wanting to sound wafty, you can call them chakras. Uh, for the more practical minded, um, I would put it to you that say you're online and something happens, your heart rate goes up. Um, or you feel your, your, your stomach tighten um, or something shocks you when you sort of have a bit of a micro panic. Um, what happens is these assaults and the way the networks are engineered to um, encourage egotistical false reward is that over time a younger person loses their ability to uh, have a positive and productive life unless unless they surround themselves completely with others who are exactly like them and even in doing so um, the chances of them having a fully positive productive life on the path that they were destined for is unlikely it is the behavioural changes that occur with younger people. They become incredibly narcissistic. It's not just a matter of emotional maturity. They have a hard time uh, initiating. They have a hard time understanding why things don't work out for them. They repeat the addictive behaviour. They wonder why they feel depressed or have ADHD or high levels of anxiety, you can tell them, well, you've got your head sunk into a laptop screen all day um, and they will simply say, no, it's not that, without having a single clue about the technology or any valid reason to deny the claim. You can show them proof. You can talk to them about the harmful effects of Wi-Fi. You can talk to them about the harmful effects of apps. What they're, what the reason they don't listen is because they're being rewarded by those apps and they're being falsely rewarded. There are chemical centres in the brain that are being activated whenever they access them. So they're getting a hit, they're like drug addicts, and they will simply not have it that something that makes them feel good could possibly be harming them. It's only when they log out and try to function in the real world that they start to have trouble. They refuse to talk on the telephone, they'd rather text. They become very insular. They can become 
antisocial. Um, they can ha start having problems at work, behavioural problems. Uh, they can become completely inappreciative of the value of material things. And by that, I mean everything that we buy has had work put into it by somebody somewhere. Um, they don't care about the resources that were taken to be able to produce that product. They have very little regard or respect for themselves and others. And I should say I'm speaking generally, um, this is a worst case scenario. Others, other children, um, you know, if they're in a household full of, full of Wi-Fi, um, it is 100% guaranteed they will never, ever be on the right path in their life. They may get married, they may have children, they may end up divorced, and then when they're 40 or 50, they'll wonder what the hell happened. Um, you might think that's not a news story and that people go through that anyway, but we've had also had television for a long time and, and, and that's really where a lot of the problems started. There are even more breakdowns of family units. There are children in homes that are fighting with their parents because of this technology. They are becoming more and more disobedient because big tech has hijacked them into a false world. It is not life. It is not living. It is not functional. It is not reality. The instant um, gratification that is received through online portals, um, you very quickly uh, get to see what it feels like if you don't get it. And in most normal people, it can produce a sense of frustration because the hit's not coming. They're putting in, but they're not getting anything back and the hit's not coming. And the sad fact of it is that while they're spending their time doing that, they could be out living, giving, caring, um, and having a positive impact on the world that, that does actually reward them uh, in positive ways and be able to come home and feel good about the job that they're doing or whatever it is, the art that they're doing, um, and have positive, healthy relationships with people that are based on respect. Social media and the internet in general has completely eroded respect. Um, younger people have become emotionally immature. If they have a problem um, and you advise them on, on how to navigate that problem, they will most likely ignore it. They just want an audience. Um, they repeat the problem and then they end up dumping it back on your lap and accusing you of not caring about them uh, because in the end you, you've had enough um, and you can't see the logic in continuing to advise and help and care for somebody who doesn't care about themselves and won't take the advice you give them. These are very narcissistic tendencies. They are very toxic um, and they're a sad, unfortunate symptom um, and outcome of children that have been mentally rewired and hijacked by big tech who all they want is money and they're ruining younger people's lives. There's, there's, when Apple brought out their phone, there was no consumer warning on it. Children should never, ever be allowed to have a smartphone. I don't believe any adult should have one because they, they affect your health in imperceptible ways that can be very harmful and very damaging. The brainwashing that occurs just by having mobile technology in a house is instant. And everyone thinks they're fine. Everyone thinks all their thoughts are their own. Everyone thinks it's, it's completely normal, but they don't realize they're actually being automated at that point. Everything that we expose ourselves to that's in the airwaves or on a screen goes straight into the brain and gets magnified. All the stuff that we can't hear that's in the airwaves is translated by the brain, is magnified and ends up coming out of our mouths. It adjusts our behaviours. <clears throat> we end up not making any sense. We end up hurting people. We end up having problems with personality, schizophrenia. The list of so-called mental disorders that has exploded since this technology came along and nobody 
seems to want to admit that there's a problem or where the problem is coming from and nobody wants to do anything about it. Why? Because there are people online who make seem to make life more interesting, like as if you were turning on a TV. People doing podcasts like myself, much more popular than I am, um, and people want to tune into this. There's drama, there's conversation, there's people talking about stuff. Well, all the talking is fine. I guess we could read that in a book that was written 50 years ago. There's still libraries and it's all been said before. Um, current topics, well, nothing really gets solved by talking about it. People might get a better understanding, but in the end, it doesn't really affect their daily life. We all have individual lives to live. And the problems in the world with politics and social justice and all these things, you know, I think it's become fairly clear that even in our activism, we are ignored by the government. They will do what they want anyway. All that we can do really is wake up to this simple fact and that the internet, all these apps, they're supported and approved by government. They, are, We are currently inside the Pentagon right now. That is where it's all coming from. The whole world is becoming an automated machine. And people wonder why they're unhappy and then start taking it out on others who haven't done anything wrong. It's, it's diabolical. And I apologise if I seem to be coming on a bit strong with that, but it's absolutely diabolical. that There are some people out there who for several years now have been able to get out of the rut that they're in because they keep feeding themselves with the technology and they don't know how to live without it. They don't know how to function without a smartphone on all the time. They don't know how to spend their evenings if they're not playing video games or watching YouTube videos. You know, I understand that there's an element of loneliness in the world, but I think that there, the reason for that and the reason why the loneliness factor has exploded is because everyone's become so isolated in front of a computer screen. This is not how we are supposed to live. It's not how we're supposed to live. We weren't born with a screen in our face. We weren't born with a smartphone. And I'm not suggesting we should all go back and live in, live in log cabins and, you know, cook our food by a fire or anything, but for there at least to be some acknowledgement that unless, unless a balance is kept, unless this, this awful technology is used very sparingly and only uh, for something that, if we want quick access to information about something, even the social aspect, they say, oh, but, you know, Facebook's there so I can, I can stay in touch with my family and friends. Well, that's a load of horse shit because everybody could stay in touch with their family and friends before Facebook. And it's actually more enjoyable to visit individual people to catch up and to keep that social activity in your life than it is to just dump a photograph on Facebook so that everyone can see it. And it's also very unhealthy because you're in each other's pockets all the time. It's disrespectful, you know, and this is the brainwashing that's occurred. There's millions of, there's over 3 billion people or something on Facebook. I mean, it's absurd. And they're always jumping on the next drama. Now, more recently, millions of lives were destroyed because of people with no purpose who found one in talking about COVID, got the information wrong and bullied other people. We have a government that is supported by these types of mentalities. A very hateful, aggressive and violent mentality. Telling people to die, go off and die then. 
if you won't do what we want you to do. That I mean, really, that's how the world is to be governed. Is that right? And yet there it is being created by people who have serious addictions to mobile technology and social apps. You know, it's like we're all being told what to do by a bunch of junkies. And then we're being blamed by a bunch of junkies if things don't work out for them the way they wanted them to, despite the fact that they never went to rehab. It's very, very important. Some of us have had our lives destroyed by mobile technology and the impact that it has had on our family members. The way that it changes their behaviour, the way that it causes them to make absolutely ridiculous and disgusting decisions, the way that it causes them to become completely narcissistic and egotistical, the way that it causes them to not care about anybody or be unable to care about anybody else because they've become so narcissistic they can no longer exchange a genuine human emotion unless they think they stand a chance of getting something out of it. And it doesn't matter what you do for them, they're a junkie. You're the one that ends up getting hurt because you can see the problem, they don't want to accept it and they continue to live their life in a destructive way that ends up hurting you. And when this is happening with family members or friends or our children, it's an unnecessary suffering that occurs for everybody involved. It is like talking to a brick wall. I've said outright to many people, that device, turn it off. That device is going to cook your head. You will end up depressed for no reason that you can think of, but you will end up depressed. With your whole life ahead of you, you'll end up depressed. And you'll be blaming other people for not caring about your well-being when that's all they've ever tried to do is get your head out of it. They're members of a cult. And once they believe that the cult is the answer for them, there is nothing that you can do that will prize them out of it. Whole entire lives being completely destroyed because Mark Zuckerberg wants to make money and rape girls. Because Apple decided to put the internet inside of the telephone and put it through the airwaves. It's... um. It's incredible that this continues. It's incredible that so many refuse to listen. It's incredible that despite the last two years that we've had, so very few people can acknowledge that most of the problem was viral media and all the noise on the internet, hammering people, stressing people out, causing fear, lowering immunity, all for something that, as horrible as it seems, still has a very low percentage, low uh, mortality. Um, and yet it, it still rates so highly on everybody's radar because it is the most controversial thing to talk about and gives purposeless, talentless people a sense of purpose. It's not a talent or an achievement to win an argument on the internet. It's more of a failure that you ever got involved in one in the first place over something that the government's going to do what they want anyway. It's sort of pointless waste of energy, as frustrating as it is. And as much as we want to have our opinions on things and be heard, they have proven they don't care. The only time they're going to care is when we all stand together and tell them, no, we're not going to do that. That's the only time they'll care. They don't listen to arguments. They don't listen to debates. They don't listen to reasoning. They only listen to actions. So until the whole world is on the same page and we stand against government and big tech, they will continue to do what they want. In the meantime, the best we can hope for is to be able to live our lives in a healthy, positive, productive, healthy way. 
and do whatever we can to make that happen. Try as hard as we can to make that happen. It will not happen if we continue to indulge narcissists, toxic people who are literal junkies, members of a cult, a social media cult, an iPhone cult. They can't even find themselves, find their way around the city anymore, anywhere, without looking at their phone for directions. They have no sense of direction. The coding of the phone, the GPS, knocks everybody's natural sense of direction out. Think about that. We have a natural sense of direction. We have a natural sense of which way we're facing based on a whole bunch of things that led us to the spot that we're at that can go, yeah, oh, no, I think it's back that way. People now, they don't have that anymore. All our natural processes are being overwritten and blown out by faulty wiring, by military coding, by a GPS grid, by negativity in the airwaves, by a complete loss of logic, light and respect for other people. And those of us out here that are tired of the treatment, tired of trying to help, we do get to a point, sadly, where we have to tell somebody, well, I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink. You, you, at least you can't blame me for not caring. You know, and it's very difficult to do that with people that are in your life on a regular basis um, when you feel there's nothing else that can be done to help them. You can't even get them to go and see a psychologist. Psychologists are probably sitting there with a smartphone making appointments by Zoom without realising that mobile, instant, mobile technology is, is an assault on mental health. People in psych wards getting seen by doctors who um, don't mind that they have their phone with them. People have gone nuts because of these devices. They've literally gone mental. But everybody is happy to say, no, it's genetic, or no, they were headed that way anyway, or this, that. Nobody's actually looking at the devices and what is actually being wrapped around the human brain all the time. Get it? Mental health problem. Where is the brain most of the time? In a phone. And to even think for a second that that's not the problem or to not even consider it is just ignorant. And more proof of how much of a grip the cult has on collective consciousness. A lot of us are very, very tired. Maybe you are too. I know I am. Um, every day for many is a struggle to get through. What I'm trying to suggest to you here is that things will get a lot easier when we stop relying on this technology to live a fully functioning, healthy life. You don't need a QR code check-in to get anywhere. The government should never put that in. They also assumed everybody has smartphones and not everybody does. It just goes to show that's how strong the cult is. They actually think everybody has one when in every phone shop there are other phones for sale. There are still other types of phones for sale. And so this is the mentality we're dealing with. And when it starts infecting your own family, friends, children, work colleagues, associates, to the point where they can't function properly anymore, they can't call back, they can't, you know, they're depressed all the time, um, they have anxiety, they have to go see a shrink, they have to go on meds, all this sort of stuff for you know, things that can be very, very simply solved by taking the mind and the heart and the biofield of the human being out of its toxic environment and putting it in a healthy one. Nature, oceans, lakes, sunshine, actual fresh air, not pollution. Peace and quiet, not noise. But instead, what they suggest is that if they throw money 
at health in a city that somehow health will get better and they don't have to change the toxic environment they're expecting everyone to live in. This is how ridiculous they are and how evil they are because even when this is made very clear to them, they refuse to accept it because there's people out there who need to make money from the toxic environment that they create. It's an incredible thing. A very incredible thing. Just say you've raised a child. And without knowing, they downloaded the Facebook app on their phone that you gave them because they started a job around 16 years age and you got them a phone because you wanted to know that they had a means of communicating with you for simple things. If something bad happened at work, they were able to get to you. If it start raining on the way home, they needed picking up, you'd be able to get them. If they got into trouble, they'd be able to call you. And that child then downloads Facebook onto their phone after you've told them not to. And the rest of their life is a wipeout. The next 10 years of their life is wasted. They get to their mid-20s, early 30s, and they've got mental health problems. They can't function. They don't care about anything. Because the time they spent online being, yes, bullied and being taught wrongly before they had even finished their education or before their brain had stopped, had finished developing, their whole life is ruined. Ruined. And imagine trying to get that child into a healthy environment, away from it, into a lovely community into nature and they buck and kick the whole way. They even turn around and tell you that they hate that sort of thing, that it's boring. Well, of course they do. They're members of a cult that has falsely led them to believe that their phone and the internet is more interesting than the warmth and genuine reward that is had from living in community-based towns, in beautiful environments, natural environments, having a family perhaps, or committing themselves to a job that they find rewarding. There's something to get up for every day and do and someone to come home to every night. Something to live for instead of this pie in the sky quest for the most followers or the most attention online or listening to people talk about things. You know, talk radio existed before podcasts like this. Talk radio existed for ages and people would use it was usually on uh, sort of in the morning and, or at night. And people would just listen to that maybe for a couple of hours if they're on their own before they go to bed. Now everybody's on their own, are they? Well, this is my point. Everybody's been isolated to be a talk radio listener or a talk radio show host. It's a maddening circle, a maddening, maddening spiral that never ends. There is no end to this. It just keeps spiraling round and round and round. The same problems keep getting created. They never come up with a solution because you cannot come up with the solution from inside the system that is the actual problem. The system has to be abandoned. Taking people the people you care about, your children, out of toxic environments.
You can dedicate 20 years of your life to doing that with your own child and still have them turn around at the end of the day and get hijacked by Mark Zuckerberg. Imagine how you'd feel. that you put all that time and effort into raising a child only to ha have some person from another country or your own um, and their technology deliberately addict them to their app or for society in general to deliberately force them to continue to use a smartphone for work, which is also bullshit. It's not required. It really is a situation where ignorance is still trying to outdo intelligence, real intelligence, where ego and disrespect is still trying to one-up common sense. It's very tiring. It's the reason our planet has been at war for so, so long. Every single day there is a war. It doesn't have to take place on battlefields with the military. There are wars in every home. There are televisions in every home. There are mobile technology in every home. I urge you very strongly, please, look after yourselves. If you're dealing with somebody who refuses to listen to you and continues to have problems in their life, to the point where it affects you, protect yourself. Demand respect and protect yourself. There is only so much that you can do to help other people. You cannot infringe on their rights. You cannot force them to get psychological treatment. You cannot take their possessions. You cannot kidnap them and take them out of their toxic environment. Despite the fact that if it was deemed the best thing for them, it would be much better if we could do that and let them sit there for two weeks and wake up to themselves and then they come out of it going, oh, this is actually really nice here. You've got fat chance of that happening as long as they've got a device in their pocket because that thing is on all day. It's all they obey. It's buzzing along in the background and they are automated by the device, automated by television, digital television, streaming and all mobile tech. So children in this world are not the same children that came along in the past. They are not children that know the beauty and the joy of climbing trees, building cubby houses, living outside, playing outdoors. They want to play video games, which I know is the same as watching a movie, I guess, except these video games go for hours and hours and hours on end. The brain gets overstimulated, gets rewired, and then suddenly, because of the massive dopamine hit they've received, nothing else in life excites them because nothing else is giving them the same reward because they won't even try it. They won't even bother to comprehend the simple fact that a natural life is far more rewarding. It feels far more rewarding. It is far more rewarding. But they will never know this because they've already got it in their head that if they don't get instant gratification, if they don't understand the principle of work, of bearing with something until the reward comes, if they don't see to themselves spiritually, mentally and emotionally to be able to open into the joy and the reward that can come from living in a natural environment without toxic technology, they will simply never experience it. And everything online is telling them to stay there. Everything. There is not a single user warning on any internet or website about the impact on mental health. There is not a single warning on any website about the impact on the mental health of children. All they do is say, monitor your children's internet activity. But as long as they're here... We're fine with it. Instead of, your child should not be on the internet. They must be 18 years old, at least, to come online. In fact, 
they should be 21 because in our country they can't drink till then. And if we're going to be forming addictions, whether it's alcoholism or internet usage, they shouldn't be able to come on it until they're 21. When they have fully completed their most of their education, whatever the case may be, they have formed themselves mostly as human beings without external toxic influence hammering away at their brain, their heart, their soul, their talents, and reshaping them into something they are not meant to be. The amount of conflict that it causes in families. Big tech, if there's ever a civil suit against big tech for the harm that they have done to the collective, to the world, to if they are ever actually called out properly by any official body as being a threat to public health, they cannot afford the payout. All those billions of dollars will not cover the amount in damages that they would have to pay if every single one of us who's been harmed by this technology put our hand up. That's how bad it is. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, thank you for listening. Please take it on board once again. I look forward to being back uh, again soon and we'll get into some more details to do with the Real Matrix files themselves um, and some finer points of detail on some of the evidence, uh, celebrity deaths, how they occur or are engineered um, and something called vandalism, uh, which is not the vandalism you're thinking of. It is the vandalism of the natural world that has occurred as a result of mobile technology. I look forward to talking more with you about that when I get back. And in the meantime, please stay safe and uh, take care of yourselves.